So okay, let's uh, get started. Uh, I thought we'll just sort of you know uh, wait a little bit. I'll just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Esha Daftri. Uh, I am the ICIFJ Google uh, Fellow. I work of newsrooms in India. Currently, I'm working with two large newsrooms. Uh, one of them is uh, the Network 18 Group, uh, where I'm specifically working on uh, newsroom projects to help improve storytelling, as well as add a little bit of uh, I would say sophistication to the entire social distribution uh, platform that they're using. Uh, I've already worked with India Spend previously. I'm joined with Farah from India Spend, where Farah is going to also take us to some of the tools or some uh, utilization of the tools that uh, you know we're going to discuss. All right. Uh, so just it will not take more than an hour. Okay. Uh, if there are any questions, you can always sort of just ping us and ask any of us. We'll stop. We're going to run through five tools for newsrooms. Okay, that's uh, sort of very easy to implement. Uh, you keep seeing a recurring theme over there. That it's easy for journalists to do, and there is no code. Okay, and that's the important uh, reason, sort of, why we're sitting here and uh, sharing these tools, right? You do not need sort of a battery and army to help you execute some of these tools. So, having said that, uh, let me begin. Uh, just to sort of, uh, what do we want to achieve today? Uh, I think all of us want to tell good stories. Okay, we want to be able to bring a lot of audio visual content into everything that we're doing. Yeah, we want to uh, sort of uh, use images, use videos, use data visualization, but we not, need not necessarily have the time or the resources in our newsroom. Okay, so let's try and ex uh, experiment with uh, some tools today. Uh, I think everybody sort of goes back to the newsroom and you know, uh, we keep talking about innovation. Okay, so that's the I word. I think uh, it's something that everybody wants to kind of, how do we do things, how do we tell stories, but how do we innovate? Okay, so we may not actually do a lot of innovative stories. Uh, let me put that, we may not, we may just start thinking along, how do we innovate for every story that we do? Rather than saying, let's innovate every time we sort of, you know, or have a new story to tell. So it's a, it's a slow process, okay? It's uh, one thing at a time, you start experimenting with your tools and that's when you sort of, uh, you know, uh, begun to do innovative stories. Hopefully at the end of uh, this session, we'll have a good sense of what you want to do in terms of innovation. Uh, I'll keep sort of repeating this. Okay. Uh, we will have a lot of questions on, you know, whether can we do this without coding? You know, do, if you don't have uh, support within the newsroom for code, you know, is it possible to do things like maps and fusion tables and so on? The answer is yes. Okay, uh, I just want to leave this one thing here. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to cover today is actually available on the net. Uh, it's also a matter of uh, discipline and practice. So if you go to Google News Lab, the short code is here. That's g.co slash news lab. There are a lot of learning resources, there, okay, including the maps, including the fusion tables, uh, a lot of data, uh, fact checking uh, lessons, etc. as well over there. So I'll just kind of quickly run to uh, the Google News Lab. So this is what it looks like. If you can, uh, just a minute. Yeah, so this is what the Google News Lab website looks like. Okay, if I uh, just type g.co slash news lab, this is really what I'm gonna see. Yeah. Uh, so here we go. So there's data journalism, a module here. There's a module on story, immersive storytelling, the module on inclusive storytelling. There's trust and verification. Yeah, so I would suggest that at the end of the session, all of you go through the training material on Google uh, News Lab, right? And that should be very helpful for uh, telling stories in newsroom as well. All right. Uh, just coming back now to uh, the keynote. We're going to start off with the dot mat. Okay, uh, this is a tool that's been developed uh, by me, okay, along with a uh, data version of a company called Pikey. Okay, uh, so what is a dot mat? Yeah, and please talk me if you think that uh, you need to have any questions over here. So it's an interactive Viz tool that's been developed by ICFJ Google Knight, that's me and Pikey, the company. Uh, it's built mostly on JavaScript, okay, there is, uh, you can keep inputting any kind of variables in a Google sheet that I'm going, to I'm going to demonstrate in a bit, right? And you can keep changing the narrative the way you want it to, okay? And you're going to visualize a data story in a very, very simple format, yeah? 
So the objective behind the dot mat is, okay, I want to build a number driven narrative and I do not want a very complicated uh, visualization. And I want people to navigate by themselves. I want to take them step by step through an entire long, uh, it's <clears throat> a data narrative. Okay. And I do not want to do the sense of proportions or ratios. So sometimes when it's one unit amongst a million, okay, you lose that sense of proportion or when it's even like four to 5%, you're not, you, know, you don't get a sense of how big that proportion really is. So the dot mat is, what we built it with the thought of actually making sense of the smallest possible unit in the entire universe. So think about it this way, if I have got about uh, 20 to 25,000 uh, you know, gun shootouts, that's one sort of visualization that we're going to do. So every single unit, every single person who's been sort of, uh, you know, going to be part of that data set, you know, for, without sort of wanting to uh, but to find on it, every single person, okay, by his ethnicity, by the way he was shot, etc., has been accounted for. So the smallest unit is what we're kind of trying to showcase in the dot mat. And finally, uh, the important thing of this is that there is no code when you're trying to use the dot mat. I will just demonstrate in, uh, the entire process in about five minutes. Uh, okay, but at the end of that, you will not have to code anything. You can just take an embed code and drop it as an iframe. All right. So. Okay, so now I am just going to go through the dot match here. Okay, uh, so there's the link here, pikey.com. Open tool is there in the presentation. Uh, is everybody, I hope everybody is with me right now. Okay, the dot mat visual, like I said, we do the entire universe or the entire data set they're talking about and you maintain the individuality of every single data that you have. Okay, uh, I'm just going to go through this first, right? Uh, this, this is a narrative dot mat that we've created. We've got five different kinds of dot mats, the narrative and exploratory, the narrative only, exploratory only. Okay, now I'm just going to show you the gun deaths in America. Yeah, I click here the total number of points. So this is a data narrative that we built a single point represents every single uh, sort of, you know, uh, gun death, right? Now I'm building my narrative. Two thirds of the gun deaths are suicide. So I've got it, you know, colored in a particular way. 85% of the, these two thirds are male. Yeah. So it's a slightly different uh, shade and you'll find the 85% of the two thirds is uh, now in a darker shade of blue. Half of all suicides are men 45 and older. Okay, so it's a little more than half, just to give you the proportions again. A third of gun deaths are homicides. So we use a different color here, right? So we're trying to build the narrative, uh, you know, slowly. Okay, we're trying to sort of, you know, with every single point in terms of the gun deaths, I know, okay, uh, this is what it looks like, you know, on a visualized data set. Okay, so I've gone a couple of clicks over here. Okay, now I'm getting to ethnicities, right? So two thirds of them are black. Okay, and then the accidents are unclassified, right? Now there is an exploratory mode over here. Okay, and the exploratory mode, okay, if I just click over here, I can quickly sort through it. Suicides, males, 35 to 64, and Hispanic. Okay, so this is what it is. So every single sort of unit has been accounted for. All right. Now let's go to the narrative only. Yeah, which is this time Pakistani prisoners lodged, lodged in Indian jail and detention centers. Okay, I'm just going to advance here. There are 310 prisoners in all. Okay, 54% are undergoing sentence, 38% are under trial, slight difference in the two colors here, you probably not see it. 20% of computer sentence and so on. Okay, now I'm just going to go here, make a dot mat. Okay. Uh, I am going to publish an exploratory story only. I'm just going to open the template. I'm not going to go through it in detail. So I click here to open the template. Okay. I make a copy. Yeah. So here you will find that, you know, there are things that I can uh, sort of, you know, change. Yeah. Change the title over here. Yeah. Pakistani prisoners, whatever the title I want for this particular dot mat. Yeah. Which is on this slide. I can make this change over here. Okay. I can change the color. Okay. There's a particular color font that I want. I can change the user custom color with the hashtag, if, with the hash code, if I have it. 
I can increase or decrease the font. I can change the font family. I can uh, okay make a point size smaller. So if I do, for instance, make it twenty five, it will automatically become smaller in the dot matrix. Okay, three hundred and ten here. Okay, one prisoner is one unit. Okay, so I'm just not going to go through everything, right? So that's the first step. I copy the template. Okay, I publish it to the web. Okay, so I say file, publish to the web. Okay, so what I've got here is something like this, right? Either a link. Okay, so if I want to publish the selection, I get this. Now I go back here. Okay, embed your visual. Okay, now I'm going to copy this into a text editor. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so what I need to change is this part, right? Uh, I'm not going to actually do this, but I need to copy this here, okay? Which is the document in which I made all the changes. I copy it, okay? And I go here. I just replace this entire thing, which is HTTP store. That's my published thing over here, which I just do that. There's another thing over here, which is I've not. Yeah, I'm just going to go to the narrative over here, right? Sorry. So I'm going to go to the narrative. Okay, now these are the individual slides that you saw over here. I'm just going to go back here. Okay, so the first part on the narrative, okay, there are 310 points, one point is one prisoner. 54% are undergoing sentence. Okay, that is this. There's the 137 count here as a font color. So I can change all of this as well. Right? So this is my copy of the dot mat uh, narrative. Okay, I've made sort of individual, uh, what do you call points over here. For every step number, there are three points with step number three. So this is what's going to happen. Right? Step number three has got one, two, three different colors over here. Right? More than 20% percent of complete the sentence is basically what I'm seeing over here. So I'm got, I've got three colors and three data points. I'm going to have it come thrice with the individual counts, with the font, uh, with the colors and the different font that I want. All right. So all this is customizable. I can change this so I can make it a uh, hashtag. Uh, just any hashtag and just, you know, like uh, pick and choose something from here. I can make it this color for instance, right? Okay. Uh, so this is what it is. So I can change all of this here. All of this change will be reflected over here. Okay. Uh, just to sort of save you a little bit of time so that we can you know, run through everything else. Yeah. I will take the embed code. Okay. And this is what it looks like. Yeah. This is something that I've created for child labor. Okay. There's the final output. Again, I've got one, one, four, seven, one point is one working child. There's a the number of children involved in child labor, I've divided the boys and girls. Yeah, so this is what the final output looks like. You need to put the published, uh, once I get the public, I'll just go that step again. I publish to the web. Okay, I get a published link, I copy this link. Okay, I take this entire thing, what needs to change is this part. Yeah, HTTP storage, uh, etc, etc, is where uh, I need to just copy paste whatever link I'm making. Okay, then I get the embed code, I copy the embed code and I can put it on anywhere in my, uh, what do you call it, in my website. All right, so it's an iframe embed. We've built it very light. Okay, it should load onto your website pretty easily without really causing you too much of, uh, sort of, uh, what do you call it, not take up too much of a load time. And it should be very easy to actually, you know, like not pull your SEO crawlers as well. All right. So now I'm just going to go back to the presentation. Okay, uh, so I'll just sum up basically what we've said. Okay, that there are narratives that you can build with every single uh, data point that you have. Okay, what the dot mat, what you're trying to do with dot mat is remove any apprehension that journalists and others could have, you know, with numbers or telling a number based story. Okay, when you start thinking about the various steps in your uh, narrative, okay, and you start breaking it down to individual steps and the numbers that you're going to tell, okay, it's sort of simple process as well. Yeah. What also happens is that as a user, you get a sense of anticipation that, uh, okay, what's coming next? Okay, so you start thinking along those lines as well. That, okay, let me not tell the story entirely in one go. 
and we break it down to various parts and then sort of you know get people to keep clicking all right uh so that's that about the dot mat i do not just a minute i sort of wish that we were able to uh, show you something else on a uh, i'll just kind of go back to the dot mat page and i'll show you an example so So this is what it looks like. It's a frame. Okay, it's going to fit in the size of your columns. Okay, it's exactly how it looks like on a live website. Yeah, uh, it'll fit. Uh, you want to make it wider? You can actually make it wider, but then it's an iframe, so it should really fit in. You know, the frame that you defined for your content. It should not be wider than that. You can increase and decrease the length. You can increase and decrease the length of each of these points as well, right? You can make it smaller. It is mobile responsive, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, uh, the entire self help sort of uh, you know communications available on the dot mat on the website. The links will be able to be at the end of the web uh, of the webinar. So you should explore it. Okay, it's a very useful tool to keep your audience engaged and to tell a story in a very very easy way. Yeah. So moving on now. Uh, well, begun is half done. I hope that was uh, not too technical and not too. I uh, did not rush to that too much. Uh, fusion tables is the next uh, thing that I want to demonstrate, and I've got Farah from India spent with me. Uh, why fusion tables? Okay. Uh, so Google has actually come up with fusion tables. Uh, the interesting thing is that it was not really a Google product, but they've acquired it recently. Uh, it is a very very useful tool, open source for visualizations, for arraying your data, for actually merging two different sets of data. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about storage or anything of that sort. Okay. So another thing that the fusion tables allow you to do, okay, build charts, merge tables, build network graphs, okay, uh, build maps easily. Like I said, you can store all your data, you can rearrange it all on uh, online. You don't have to actually physically uh, spend resources doing that. Google Fusion Table is pretty smart in doing all of it. Okay, so Farah is going to like uh, use her uh, experience with Google Tables, right? I'm going to stop sharing. And she's going to take you through what they've done with India Spend and uh, how they've done it. All right, thanks. Over to you, Hi, uh, I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, so let me just show you an example of. Let me share my screen with you. Mm, yeah. Okay. So this is something that we uh, did when uh, during the election periods. And uh, just before the elections, we had a series of graphs. And we used Google Fusion for these. OK, so the data is very simple. We just had data in two columns. And uh, it's in an Excel sheet. OK, now uh, when I uh, create a Google Fusion uh, map, I need the shape files, uh, .shp files. Okay, that's the only thing that you will need to source really, and there's no coding as such involved, but you need these uh, SHP files. These were then, uh, con this will be easily available on something like GitHub, DataMeet, etc. Uh, yeah, and and uh, there's this one uh, website I am just trying to uh, yeah give me a moment please so this is where I have imported uh, the dot uh, uh, shp files for India for, uh, for India you can use it for whichever state or country you can just run a search over here there's a website which is called as shapeescape.com it helps you uh, to uh, convert these shp files into kml files all you need to do is simply upload these you click on to shape fusion tables and you say continue okay Okay. 
just one moment yeah and uh, this is necessary because you're converting your dot shp files into kml files kml files are uh, the language which google can understand so once you've downloaded that uh, this is the indian districts so there are different sets of files you will have one two three four five six different types of files which need to be in a zip format and once you upload it it will kind of create a geometry for you uh, this only needs to be done once once this is already on your fusion tables all you would simply need to do is um, use this excel sheet over here to uh, merge it with the kml files and then this is what you get it's very simple and there's no codes involved and the final product is amazing i'll show you one more thing that i did with this and that is i created a gif So you can see uh, as the years are changing, you can see how the communal violence has increased all over uh, Uttar Pradesh, which is a state of India. And I've used Google Fusions to create it. Then I just took snapshots of it and combined it into a GIF. You can do amazing things with the tools that are available and yeah it's very simple there's no code involved so if you guys have any questions please do let me know Shad, I yeah think so i'm going to you. add uh, yeah i'm just going to add one more thing here uh, i'll yeah. just share my current screen okay which is uh yeah so what i've got is a, an old fusion table that we had uh, created which was using blood banks uh i think what it does and what is uh, i think very easy with which you can do with the fusion tables is that it picks up the geo location all right so i've got these states in india okay with the number of blood banks in each of these states okay uh okay i'll just go back a little bit you go to fusion tables.google.com or you do a search for fusion tables okay and then it just you have to run through a few hoops. Yeah, so let me skip all of that. But I just want to show you what the final sort of output looks like. So I've just arrayed all of these into a fusion table. Okay, now it's giving me two things. One is that it's giving me the number of, it's, it's made all these cards. Okay, so using some very basic HTML, I can actually add more uh, data over here. However, this is what it does. Okay, it is recognizing every single location that I've put in the table and creating a map on its own. All right, so that's one sort of very important uh, you know, attribute of fusion tables and what uh, Farah mentioned, if you have the KML shape files, okay, it will actually pick it up and then share it for you. All right. So if I am looking to do, for instance, a simple map, okay, of let's say a few cities or wherever I am, I need to just put in the name of the city, Google will pick it up and it will also let tell me the information that's around it, right? So there you go. This is the information for this particular state. It's got 899 blood banks. Okay. I can change something over here. I can, for instance, make it uh, markers, okay? And I can make the markers red, yeah? Okay, this is all in Fusion Tables. If you can see the link over it's Fusion Tables or Google.com, suddenly the markers have changed, okay? What I can do is, uh, okay, now the info window, sorry. Let's change this. I am going to go to a heat map, okay? So now I'm going to say make it uh, sorry, not very opaque, but I'm going to increase the radius a little bit. I'm going to keep experimenting. So I know in a very visual sense, okay, that if, where is the chances of me finding a blood bank all over India? Okay. Because of the heat map. These are two attributes I just want to share. All right. Uh, you, we will obviously tell you how to get to fusion tables. Okay. But this is what it is, right? So you can just create a map over here. What next? You basically uh, go to file. 
okay you could import you could uh, you know i mean far will also tell you about how you can you know later use the embed code for each of these maps and you know kind of embedded in your website like the way she has done okay so it's a very very easy way of using maps using you know these kind of cards and arranging tables yeah there's a couple of other things that you can do uh, which is in the old fusion tables okay which i don't know if you've got the time here but if you you can go to tools you can or you can go to help you can go to the classic look i'm just quickly going to run through this and the classic look will basically let you do things like visualize okay so this is the other thing now there's only map and intensity maps over here but i can do line i can do bar i can do pie i can do scatter okay all of these things all right so that's about uh, the fusion tables thank you so much para okay uh, yeah. just to sort of sum up it's a very clean way of doing data visualization so like i said i suggest you experiment with it go back to the classic look okay uh, use the options of making lines bars you know using the intensity maps yeah you can once you click on publish is when you will get the embed code anyway like you've seen again you do not need to code yourself you only need to click publish you will get the embed code yeah the map building is done automatically i just showed you it picks up geolocation and then builds a map for you and no code i think that's the biggest sort of uh, win that you can think of uh up next is a slightly more sophisticated way of making google uh, of making maps again i'm going to use google maps for it because uh, a it is sort of free to use it is very easy to use okay yeah and it's not just for journalists anybody can make their maps if you want to do it for your own sort of uh, you know for a private internal presentation you can use google maps yeah now what the other advantage it gives you is that it can you can use a lot of multimedia along with the maps yeah so you can use videos you can use images okay you can also use various markers like i showed you uh, in the fusion tables and you can just bring alive the entire map it need not just be a map it can be a complete story okay uh there's something called layers the layers will allow you to sort of you like i just said you know use very rich mapping uh, stories you can embed images video and text into each of those layers okay and again there is no code so i've linked to this over here okay i'm going to go back to my chrome where i've got my maps open all right so these are just some maps that i've created in the past yeah uh i am going to open or oh, i'm just going to explore something all right so there is a map over here which says california fire map okay the link is mymaps.google.com but we will share that link with okay now you can see over here it's a slightly richer experience than what you would find in a fusion table right okay so this map is basically for all california fires i just want to see it is particular year okay october to december there's one layer in this layer i can see maps in this particular time frame okay I want to see another uh, sort of a time frame here. Yeah? That's September twenty sixteen. And I get all of it. I'm going to uncheck one. Yeah, the other files that were uncontained and uh, files in September twenty sixteen. So there's only one file uncontained in August, which was a tool fire. Notice the kind of uh, marker that they've used. It's a custom marker. I'll just come to that in a little bit. And these are the other uncontrolled files in June. Yeah, there is. There's been about four of them. So I click here. I get information of that. The San Gabriel complex. Okay, there's uh, there's a pine fire. There's a little more uh, description about it. Yeah, and there is the pony fire. Okay, so how is all this happening? I'll just spend about five minutes in you know uh, getting this set up. Okay, so I'm going to go to create a new map. Okay, uh, let me just uh, basically do a map of uh, some of the people that are attending. So let me just go to Washington first and literally just gonna go here, yeah. Okay, that's it. I'm just gonna put my mark over here. So this is my, uh, I'm gonna name this attendees of ICFJ webinar, yeah. Uh, on the, 
20th of April, we had a webinar. So there's just a description I'm going to give it. I'm going to save this. Yeah. Oh, uh, this. So remember the detail that you saw on the earlier map for the fire? That's over here. Okay. I am going to add this to the map first. Yeah. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to add my own details over here. So I click on edit and I say this is where ICFJ's HQ is and where the webinar hosts are. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Yeah, now that's Washington. Now this is my first layer. I'm going to call this layer uh, webinar 20th April. Now what I can do is I can actually then add other layers later. Okay, now it says individual styles here. I click over here. Okay, and there's a whole bunch of things over here. I don't want to get into that right now. Okay, I can have labels, names, and descriptions, but I can change this. Okay, I want to make this a custom icon, so I click on more icons. Yeah, I will pick something which is appropriate. So if I can put webinar, for instance, will it show me something of that sort? Shapes or no? Uh, yeah, let's just use this one. Yeah, viewpoint. I'm going to use a different color for it. Yeah, so this is what my icon looks like. That's Washington. Okay, I can add more details over here, like I said. Yeah, I can add an image. Okay, if I've got an image, I can take an image or I can add an image URL. So if I've got something which I've got in my CMS, I can add the URL over here. Okay, I can also add a video. All right, so image and video. Okay, the image and video will show up. Yeah, uh, I can add, let's say, now the second location is New York. Yeah, yeah, so it's picked it up. I'm going to add it to map. Yeah, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to change the style. I'm going to use this. I'm going to change the color to something that I like. Okay, so that's New York. Edit. So this is another location, right? So you can add lots of data over here, lots of rich data over here. Like I said, uh, you know, you can do complete surveys, for instance, right? Okay, now that's pretty much what my map looks like. I'm just gonna preview it. I don't want to like get into publishing out right now. Okay, now look in view only mode. So this is what the headline is. Yeah, if I click on Washington, I get a little description of Washington. If I click on New York, I get description of New York. Okay, so this is what the idea of the map is. Okay, ultimately I want my map to be as interactive as possible. Okay, and there are the other things over here. I can add directions. I can draw a line in fact I've, you know uh, in one of my maps I'll just show you what the line looks like okay and of course you know uh, what I want to do is I want to publish it okay either I export it okay I embed it I get the embed code okay so it's not public uh, I'll eventually have to share it right so this is how you do it click here either you embed it on your website you get the embed code or you export it yeah that's one way of using the map uh, just one more thing I'll actually show you Just a minute, I'll pause the share. So this is a full fledged map that uh, Farah who was one of uh, our, uh, I mean, she just finished the region table. This is what we've done for India, Spain. Uh, this is basically an entire survey converted into a map and then we embedded that into a story. Right? So I have a look at there are, 20, uh, there are about 24 survey points over here. Yeah, we mapped it down to location within the city of Mumbai and in India. We've got a photograph. We've got his age, his name, okay, exactly what you know, what's happened to him when this particular policy decision was taken. Okay. And we've got the map uh, detailed over here. All right. So he's number one over here. Yeah. Uh, this is down because we've got latitude, longitude data. Okay. Or we've got sort of suburban location. The map picks it up. Right. And it will actually uh, give me the exact location within a city. So I showed you Washington, but you could actually look for a suburb within Washington. You can look for a borough of New York in that map since it's a point. It will show up. You can put, drop your pin over there and you can add all these other details that you want to add over here. All right. So that's enough about the maps. 
just just one thing is sharp that i'd like to yeah. say is that google and my maps is very very user friendly it's very easy compared to google fusion tables yeah. this is very user friendly so it's just like you click you add you upload and you're done you're ready to publish no Absolutely. codes nothing nothing at all yeah so what i did uh, i did not make the map public as they would have stored on my uh, laptop but you yeah. the moment you make your map public you just click on those three little uh, overflow uh, you know icon over there it will give you the option of publishing it will also give you the option of embedding or it will give you the option of the cms code uh, sorry the kml code which para showed you as well right uh, okay. just to start what you just said it's easy to create free to use okay you can add a lot of details like i said right so every one of those pins that i just showed you you can add images you can add video you can add even slide shows suddenly your story becomes very very interactive and what we found is that time spent when there is an interactive map of this sort goes up a lot on the page yeah typically clicks on if there's a story with a map goes up about four times at least the map has four times the typical number of clicks a story has okay so the story on use the map gets about 4000 uh it is also very very seo friendly google scholar recognizes it's a google map okay so it will not penalize your page because you've got an embed So I would highly recommend that you do this. And finally, and you know what I keep saying again and again, this the digital tools we're going to talk about today is basically you do not need to code. All right. Uh, so that's that about maps. Uh, up next, Facebook Live. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to. I think most of you are familiar with this tool. Okay, but I'm just going to sort of give you a different perspective on what the live is. Okay, so I've got a link over here. I'm just going to show you this link. Yeah. So there's a link of a Facebook live video. Sorry. So I'm just going to pause this here. Okay. Uh, encouraging so many people to want to experiment with these live broadcasts is it's a great way to tell stories, express things in a very multi-dimensional way that, that you get from your video. You know, it's also a great way to get people to watch. Which I mean, that's the old. Okay, so I'm not sure if uh, the audio was going through. Okay, but I suggest that all of us have a uh, we all have a look at this uh, video. All right, uh, I'm just going to put this link in the chat feed. It's also there as part of my presentation. Okay, uh, this is to everybody. Okay, you can have a look at this video sort of you know a little later. Uh, the simple point I'm trying to make. I'm just going to sort of play this thing again. Yeah, uh, we just Google how to buy the giant map. Okay, so just the initial shot. Okay, it was basically a it was shot live. Yeah, it was a cheat that was done. Yeah, but it was shot live. Okay, uh, coming back to this. Okay, this is what you can do with live. It's not. I think everybody is aware of the actual sort of live. You know that you can go from your phone. Okay, so that's very easy. I've got uh, my phone in front of me. So I just have to click on the Facebook app. Yeah, uh, it's basically what's on my mind. Uh, I don't know how clear it is. Okay, but there will be something called live over here. Okay, Facebook would like to access the camera. I'm going to say okay to it. The microphone. 
yeah so it's there in your status okay i can go live right now we are already going live on facebook through this uh, this particular webinar but that's not the point of doing this really okay uh, what i want to show you the video was that there are options of doing simulated live okay uh, you will get a lot of audience engagement what we've seen is that when we've done simulated lives okay with good graphics and you know uh, a storyline and a narrative okay we found that our engagement rates are at least uh, so typically on a post if it's about 0.9 to 1% on a live that goes up to about 2 and a half 3% that's the number of people watching it the number of people uh, you know clicking on the like button the heart button the share button etc it goes up by about 2 to 3 times and typically the audiences also are much more on a regular video if we get about say 4 to 500 uh, people watching that video the live audience is at least three times that right the cumulative that's people watching it live and watching it later okay so it is engaging audiences facebook gives you a nudge okay but what i'm saying is that there are two kinds of live okay breaking news yes you take your phone now you actually you know like uh, click on the live in your status option and you can actually you know like broadcast something as it's breaking a protest for instance that's a very very powerful tool of going live okay but uh, what we just showed you was that you can actually think about doing discussions okay the way that you can do it on tv uh, have a look at the entire link i think that link did a very very good job explaining what simulated live or what could be done with facebook live okay so how do you do that okay you have your regular camera feeds get feed into an open source software called obs or a paid software called live stream yeah you will need a line producer for that okay he can fire graphics in real time he can actually have like you saw on the social flow video right you can have uh, aston bands describe who the person is you know you can have fade in fade out etc you can do it live like a very very good tv show and you can record it in advance so if i know that uh, there is something that is happening tomorrow and i don't have time for one of the people i want to talk to i can record it in advance i can store it okay i can do the live post production and i can say go live at 7 pm eastern time tomorrow evening all right so facebook live yes but i would also recommend you have a look at obs which is uh, the open source software okay obs will allow you to do very very good simulated live live stream is a complete stack so it's not just a software you will actually have by the entire live stream stack yeah there are other tools there are other software that i can sort of you know recommend a little later you know probably uh, in the q and a as to you know what you can do okay but with a live producer with a couple of cameras you can actually do broadcast quality as good as television via facebook live you can also export it from there you can export it to your youtube and to your website so the video is sort of uh, once you record it and once you create it it's there for like you know uh, to keep all right so we're going to come to one last thing okay uh, which is long form storytelling i had actually explored two free tools over here i'm just going to talk about one okay what is the need of actually even doing this right why a tool for long form storytelling i think anybody who's worked in a newsroom knows that you know your cms is aren't geared to actually have very rich uh, hosted content right if you embed something for instance if you embed let's say 10 tweets your page load becomes slow and then google start penalizing you yeah uh native cms do not give you the best multimedia experiences okay have you thought about the difference between let's say a very very good app okay versus a newsroom's uh, typical you know story it's just basically a very very simple story that will allow you to scroll up and down okay any app will give you a much better experience than you know typical news story even in their app right so i'm thinking of literally even if you could the youtube app or anything like that so the experience of actually swiping up and down and experiencing it is much better i mean why just that instagram any of those apps okay because they're built natively for that all right uh what basically sway and activist the two tools i'm going to show you activist first and maybe sway later okay is fundamentally allows you to build stories with blocks yeah uh you pick a block in that block you decide whether you want to put in text you want to put in text plus image text plus image plus video etc etc okay and you also can give it a certain kind of tonality okay so you can have a background image for the entire story you can have an image that spreads across uh, some part of your uh, you know long form story so that you can demarcate section 1 and 2 so it's like medium only a little more sophisticated and unlike and, and a bit like medium also atavist and sway allow you to uh, basically use your own website url and point to that particular uh, long form story that you're building all right so i'm going to now show you a little bit of atavist
So this is, uh, I hope you can see the screen. Okay, this is atovis.com is uh, the first one. Okay, I can go home first to this. And then we can uh, sort of look at the demo. So this is what the home uh, looks like uh, when it loads. Yeah. Okay, what you do is, mm -hmm. sorry, okay. Uh, Okay, so I've just got a couple of projects that I had, uh, you know, prepared. Yeah, so if I go to a new project. Okay, so like I said, it's block building. Okay, I can start from here. I didn't even have to click here. I just scrolled over it. It asked me project title. So this I'll call it demo two. I can scroll down. Okay. So all I'm doing is just quickly filling in the details. It picks up bylines. Okay, because I'm the creator, it'll pick up my byline. Yeah, uh, I can choose the design. Okay, I keep it simple for now. Okay, this is what it looks like. It'll come on the left. Yeah, it's a simple design, but I can look at the other one. This is what it looks like. Yeah, which is the title, title, byline, text. Okay, this is what it looks like. Okay, uh, now that I'm done, I will save this and I will actually start building my story. All right, so I click here because this is my block. Okay, what do I need to, okay, now I need to browse the blocks over here. Uh, drag and drop, yeah, it's as simple as that. Whoosh, I can do that, okay. Uh, so this is an image, I can do a text overlay on the image. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna like, you know, quickly just give you a few options. I can do layout and graphics, okay, uh, full quote, yeah. So I can drag and drop, I can just write the full quote. So there are various options over here. I can keep experimenting with different options and see what the final output looks like. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, you can go through each of these embeds and integrations. Okay. I can put a map. I can put a SoundCloud link. I can even use a dot mat uh, embed code over here. Okay. In an iframe and I can put it here. Images, video and audio. Again, I can use YouTube. Okay. I can actually look within, uh, you know, like the files that I have and I can add it over here. All right. I can drag and drop it from my uh, desktop as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you the various options. You can write your text wherever you want. I can add a section here. I'm just gonna copy paste some text over here. Sorry. Uh, okay, let me just take some text from here. So I'm just gonna copy paste this text over here. Okay. Uh, I've so I can do, I can preview it over here if I want to. So I'm just gonna show you sort of a ready preview. Uh, it's gonna take time. Yeah, this is what the text look like. So I'm just gonna show you something I'd done earlier. This is what the entire final output looked like. It's all drag and drop, okay? It is from Moby Dick, some of you recognize it. Yeah, so this is the text from Moby Dick. This is the image I've used. Yeah. I've used the sort of full quote, I mean, you know, the uh, sort of quote highlight over here. All right. And the poor, what do you call it? what I just showed you over here, the full quote. Okay. Image again. So this is all done on Atavist. Yeah. As it said, it's made with Atavist. You can make your own. Okay. One, a uh, couple of things over here to uh, realize that, okay, uh, the free option you will have to host it on Atavist itself. So you can do all your multimedia stories over here. Yeah, you can uh, drag and drop the text. You can change the fonts. You can change the size and all of that. You'll have to sort of, you know, navigate a little bit. Uh, you probably don't have enough uh, sort of, you know, time to navigate into individual story details. But you can do all of that. Yeah, you can add videos. You can add text or add images. You can also, I've just pulled out the FAQ page over here. Okay. Which is, can I use your own domain name? Yes. Okay. Uh, Easiest way is to use a C, C name. You can use a subdomain of your site and then each project will have its own URL. Okay, so it's a longer process here. You do not, if you have, if you're worried that it will show as activist.com, do not worry, you can actually do that. So I'll show you one example. Yeah, this is Hindustan Times. Built a, most somewhat on Atavist. Okay, uh, images over here. 
yeah it's got this something called a static url so ahimstan.com times.com slash static ground glass all right so that is the other project and it's pretty much built on atavist okay and uh, yeah so you can actually hide you don't have to necessarily say it's an atavist.com project you can actually you know point it to your website and they've even got an option for that all right uh, before i actually finish off there is something else called sway Okay, so it's Sway.com. Okay, it's a Microsoft-owned project now, unfortunately. But here's what somebody has done over here, which is using the tool that I've just shown you. Okay, experimenting with it. Okay, you have an image, you overlay the text onto the image, and you scroll down. Okay, section one, I'm going to highlight the headline. Yeah, and I've got like a few, a little bit of text. I've embedded few videos over here. Again, it's all drag and drop. All right. So Atavist and Sway is all drag and drop. Yeah, we could actually go home and check out some sways. Yeah, uh, again, I've just done a demo a little, a little recently. Uh, this is a new account that I've created just for this demo. A little slow, but it's similar. Okay, I need to just basically open up things. It'll give me options to drag and drop, edit. Yeah, it's it's a very very easy way of creating. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to show you the preview. I've used the text overlay on the image. I've used another image. I've used some text. I can change the background. I've got the links over here. Yeah. So that's what it is. Yeah, if I want to edit, I can change the layout. Yeah, I can make it. Pain. There you go. I can actually go left to right. Yeah. So I can, if I'm going thinking mobile, then I can get people to swipe like this. So I can create individual cards or individual sort of stories over here. I can add more stuff to it as well. All right. So I don't want to sort of uh, get into great details over here, but I would ex uh, urge you to use both of these tools. Atavist, because it is sort of the standard. Yeah. And you can actually hide the Atavist URL and you know, it will not affect your uh, SEO as well. So you can use that. You can get some amount of integration done from Atavis into your uh, newsroom's website. Sway, if you're doing some internal presentation, I would recommend that. It's not very easy to sort of integrate it into uh, your regular stories, but you can definitely use it as well. Uh, so that sort of pretty much brings me to the end of my uh, demonstration. Yeah, we've gone through it in a pretty good time. Like I said, why do we do this? Drag and drop, build your own Sway as you please. You don't need any text, no code. Uh, if you use a paid plan, you can point to own URL. Uh, so that's how you can actually, you know, build it on Atavist and then you can use that page and you can point it to, let's say, hindustantimes.com slash some kind of microsite and it'll pick up the project name. Uh, I put the however over there. Uh, just a minute. Oops, I've gone back a couple of pages. Yeah, so the however, the final point really is that this is not something that most newsrooms are very comfortable using even now. Uh, I kind of, you know, feel that this is the future. Uh, you will have to do more interactive and more compelling stories where people swipe left, right, or they actually, you know, click, you know, and they keep sort of, you know, discovering new things as, the, as far as stories concerned and not just scroll up and down. Uh, where it breaks down is because it does have an impact on your load time. Okay, if you do a lot of rich stories and a lot of things like this, then it will not load easily and therefore it will have an impact on your SEO score as well. So do not use this for too many stories. Pick one of your multimedia stories, try out Atavist. Uh, you can reach out to me if you have any other, you know, and, you know sort of, uh, you know, build uh, stuff onto it. Yeah. Uh, and try out Sway as well. Sway is a little, I would say, not friendly for Multimedia stories, it's however very good for presentation and it's very good for like, you know, just getting discoverability on some of your social platforms as well. All right. So as far as I'm concerned, that's all folks uh, available for any questions now. And thank you so much for listening very patiently. Uh, I had a few technical hit, uh, glitches in the beginning where things started popping up on my screen. But uh, yeah, so we'll for questions right now. Anybody?
Okay, so I think uh, just a minute. So I think we're good over here. Thank you so much, uh, Shams, uh, and uh, everybody else who was part of it. You can you can reach me uh, on Twitter. My uh, sort of Twitter handle is at the doctor. Okay. Uh, if you look at uh, Zoom's Q and A, if, you, uh, if I mean there is a Q and A feature, I think, uh, and thank you, Harry, as well. Uh, yeah, you can also ask questions on Facebook Live. I'm not getting any. Okay. Uh, okay. So we have some uh, questions. Just a minute. So Adrian, I think I answered your question. It is a free. Uh, it's a free tool. Okay. Uh, Just a minute. Oh, got it. Okay, I think I've just discovered. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, so, Shams, I'll just come to your question first. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, you have to just put your data inside the dot mat and fusion table. Okay, uh, Google will not generate data. However, there are sources of data which I, which you, if you go to the Google News Lab site, they've got lots of uh, sort of uh, sources of data from the US, from various parts of the world, not so much the subcontinent, and you can use that data to actually uh, generate your fusion table. Okay, uh, but yes, the only manual input is your data. All right. Uh, yeah. Farmeem, okay, the simulated live. Uh, Farmeem, I don't think that's, uh, you're right, it should, you should not do it often. But like I said, there are two kinds of live. One is your breaking news kind of story. Okay, you should basically take, uh, you know, the Facebook app and you should record that and send it up. The other is slightly more detailed and engaging. Okay, the subscribers also like. So for instance, with a simulated live, I can start reading questions. All right. So I can start, uh, if people are asking you questions in my life, I can start answering them in real time. Okay. So in, in a sense, I'm not losing, I'm not giving up their trust. Yeah. But yeah, there's, there's a fine balance. You have to sort of, uh, decide that, okay, I'm going to go live with my app most of the time. I'm going to try and simulate it for something I can plan in advance. All right. So then I can, I need not go, you know, I can actually go live in real time. So I can run it through an OBS software and I can have a 10 second delay, but I can still answer questions in a very, very, you know, with some graphics, with exciting or sophistication, if I'm, you know, using that option. Yeah. I hope that answers your, uh, question. Uh, Ketan. Okay. So Ketan, uh, this will take a little bit of time. So atavis, atavis com is where you need to go for it. Yeah. Uh, it will ask you to sign up. Okay. It fundamentally is a drag and drop tool. Yeah. Uh, obviously if you've got text and images in a regular story and, uh, if you're working for a news magazine, then you can actually kind of try and reimagine the entire story in Atavist. There are different modes over there. Like I just show you the scroller mode, right? You can actually build a different kind of navigation. You can paginate it. You can decide that you want to go from left to right. You know, like people can, you know, click like a slide chair. So it's a lot about exploration. Um, how do I, uh, yeah, I could sort of, uh, you know, like, uh, connect with you separately and yes, you can use it as your blog. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, because if you sign up, let's say you sign up as Ketan Trivedi, you say Ketan Trivedi or atavis.com is going to be your, uh, sort of address. Yeah. That can be your blog. Uh, for me, is there a step-by-step -step process? Yes. Okay. Uh, we can actually do a walkthrough. Yeah, it'll take about 10 minutes. If everybody can hang on with us, we can do that. Yeah, I can uh, maybe take that through uh, if anybody wants a step-by-step -step process of the Google Fusion table. Yeah, uh, Farah, you want to take that on? Yeah, you can answer a couple of questions. I'm just going to open a few links and uh, give me two Got minutes. It. So, Ketan, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Shams, you're right. There are sometimes signal problems. So I will, uh, share a list. So OBS is one. Okay. Live stream is the other. So these are software application. Like I said, you can, uh, you'll have to connect it to a camera though. Okay. Otherwise, if you're going live from your phone, then that's it. That's the only way you can do it. It's an app. If you're going live, like I said, through camera feeds, 
which you put into your laptop or a production control room equivalent and then you have a live a software like an OBS or live stream patching it together that works. Okay. But for the live feature, no, you have to have good connectivity. Uh, I think it works very well in 3G. So in subcontinent, you should be able to use 3G and you'll go ahead with it. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, Ishad, I can take over now. I am sharing yeah, okay. my screen now. Okay. Sure. So you just need to upload this file, uh, um, which is easily available on GitHub or, or you know on datameet.org. This file will be uploaded, and you will get a link which will finally look one second like this. So this is. What the, what the data will look like and uh, this is the entire district level map of India. I have data only for Uttar Pradesh. So when I fuse these two tables, what I get is not the entire map of India. I will get it. One second. I will only get something which looks like this so it will highlight only that portion uh, which i merge with my data set it will not uh, give me the whole thing i just wish that this link could open but it's just not opening okay okay uh, i think what we can also do is uh, do a quick run through from uh, fusion tables from the time we go to fusion tables mm -hmm. okay uh, and then how do you export a file, just a basic data file into the fusion table? Okay, one second. So there are two parts to it. One is obviously uploading the, you know, the KML yeah. files okay. for the map. Yeah. And the other is actually building the table. Yeah. Yeah. So you can either merge it with a Google spreadsheet that you have, or you can choose a file. I am going to choose a file. Yeah, so let's say I pick up a file of UP and I can just click next. It will show me this is what my data looks like. Okay, here you can give it whatever name that you wish to attribute this data to whatever link uh, or whatever is the data source. You can give a description if you like to and then click next. So when I click next, this is what I will get. The card view is something that looks like that. We don't want something like that. We want something that looks good. So this is what is happening. This is the geocoding that Irshad was talking to you about. Okay, so it is automatically trying to code this, but this will not just happen if you have a Excel sheet and if you do not have a shape file. I mean the merging process if you want a filled map like how I created. So right now it's basically finding all the data points that I have provided it with. Yeah, and this does take a bit of time. <laughs> yeah.
Yes, now we're done. Now, if I see my map, if you see, I haven't got anything. My final product is, this is not what my map was looking like, what I showed you initially. So to do this, I need to merge it to the KML file that I have created using SH. I, you can just give it a name that you will remember more often. So here is my district level uh, shape file which has been converted for Google Fusion tables. Uh, it is, uh, yeah. I simply have to say district should match district. There are different options, but yes, this is what, I, what you're going to click. Yeah. Next, you merge, and then you get this link, merge of UP and district. So what basically this step was, you're converting, uh, you're merging your data set with the KML file you have created from your shape files. Let's see how this looks. Okay, so uh, this is basic, KML is basically a language, you can see over here, this yeah. says, yeah, so it has uh, very nicely converted all your data points. Let's zoom in, let's see how our map looks now. It's still not looking like what I originally uh, finally made it look like, so I'll show you how you can do that. <laughs> this is... There you go, change feature styles, uh, polygons, buckets. You will, I, I am going to use this data range. If you want, you can divide it in, into uh, three buckets, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I generally would avoid more than five because if there's too much of color, you don't really know what you're focusing on. Let's just stick to three right now. Uh, so let's just oh wait. let's make this green let's make this orange let's make this red okay so now what i am seeing is three different distinct regions one with, uh, which is red and with uh, the mortality rate, infant mortality rate is the highest to the orange region where it is not very high but it's not very low and green uh, generally I would avoid using this color because any amount of infant mortality ratio is not good but uh, yes so uh, this is where you have the lowest or least infant mortality rate yeah i hope i've answered your question guys yeah uh for me does it answer your question i think a step-by-step -step process okay so i think we're all done here uh you guys uh, basically if you still have any other questions you know where to find me my twitter handle is the easiest way of reaching me my twitter handle i'm just sending it to the uh, entire group it's at the rate of Terry. all right uh yeah, everybody can you know sort of ping me if you need to. Uh, slides will be available with all the links, right? Uh, so yeah, and uh, like I keep emphasizing, it's all free. You need you can keep sort of going to the Google News Lab. That's the short link is right at the beginning. It's g.post slash news lab. That's an easy one to remember. Yeah, and uh, keep checking out the kind of content they've got there. Yeah, you will they, they will keep sort of updating you with various tools and tips and tricks and we you know we are always available between icfj ij net keep updating all right so thank you everybody have a good day good evening good night wherever you are thank you so much for taking your time and joining us yeah bye bye everyone bye